This is a Triumph Stag. Triumph Stag was first conceived in 1965 by the Italian designer Giovanni Michelotti. Now Michelotti was in effect the in-house designer for Standard Triumph for a decade from 1959 onwards, although he was never actually directly employed by them. During this time, he was responsible for the design of all Triumph cars except the TR6, TR7 and the Honda base to claim. His first work was actually the facelift of the standard Vanguard. The list of his new Triumph designs is long and includes the Herald and Vitesse, TR4, GT6 and 2000, Toledo and Dolomite. Michelotti wanted to show off his talents at the Turin Motor Show, so he cadged a well-used 2000 saloon from Triumph to convert to an open-top Grand Tourer. It had actually been used as a support car of the Le Mans 24-hour race and was driven to Turin directly afterwards. From it, he produced a two-door Grand Tourer on a shorter chassis. The deal was that Standard Triumph would get first refusal on the design if they liked it. Well, they didn't like it, but they loved it. So Michelotti didn't get his design concept car for the motor show, but Standard Triumph, which had been acquired by British Leyland in 1960, did get an iconic design. The code name for the project was Stag, and no better name was suggested, and so it became the name of the car. Development started in 1966, but was beset with problems, both mechanical and financial, and it wasn't until four years later, in 1970, that the Triumph Stag was finally launched. independent suspension all round, power steering and brakes and electric windows as standard, it was pretty technically advanced for its time. The distinctive rollover bar was added to stiffen the monocoque body. Depending on options, it would have set you back about £2,000 at the time, including purchase tax. Now, £2,000 in 1970 is worth about £31,000 today. And £31,000 in 2020 would get you something like a top-of-the-range Ford Focus or a mid-range Skoda Superb. Well, I think I know which I would prefer, but I don't think I'm necessarily considering practicalities. Initially, the Triumph Stag was well received. It was popular with the young, better-heeled gentlemen of the day, who might otherwise have chosen a Mercedes SL, which is what the Triumph Stag was pitched against. Using the terminology of the day, it was considered to be a good car for pulling the birds. As a result, it was soon dubbed the Triumph Shag. Not that I could possibly use such terminology today, of course. The powers that be at Standard Triumph were hopeful of sales of something like 12,000 a year, including the lucrative North American market. But sadly, things quickly began to unravel with a succession of mechanical problems, particularly overheating, leading to expensive warranty claims for new engines. So, in the Triumph Shag, things were getting steamy, but for all the wrong reasons. The car was now acquiring a new epithet, the Triumph Snag. The effect on sales was disastrous, and in the United States, all but collapsed. And rather than sales of 12,000 a year, in a seven-year production run, 
only about twice as many cars as that were produced total. Well, the car's mechanical woes were sorted out thanks to some very clever engineers and enthusiasts, but alas, the damage was done. Sales to the US ceased in 1973 and completely in 1977. Fortunately, according to Stag Owners Club, 50 years on from launch, over 9,000 tribe stags have survived worldwide and are now lovingly looked after by a devoted band of proud enthusiasts, including me, ensuring the thrill of driving this all British Grand Touring Classic will continue for many years to come. Congratulations on your golden anniversary, tribe stag.